What's going on guys? So in front of you, you were looking at what has to be one of the coolest and most modern bike racks available today. Now this is the Inno Tire 2 platform bike rack. It gets that name because of some really cool attributes. First of all, no part of the actual bike rack touches the frame of the bike, except the cable that you would wrap around the frame to prevent theft. Secondly, it holds two bikes and it does it in a very secure fashion. Now, I like this better than just about any of the other platform racks that are available, even though I know that's a very subjective topic to talk about because people have had great experiences with all the other brands. But what's really nice about this system, especially from an assembly perspective, is how it comes to you. Anyways, guys, we're going to take a look at this. I'll be right back. So I have to give huge kudos to the folks at Inno for how they package this up and how they send it to you. Now, I didn't want to do this review the same way that I would normally do one of these where I assemble the whole thing in front of you because I wanted to give myself kind of a realistic expectation as a consumer of how long it would take to put one of these together. And that was really, really eye-opening because a lot of products that you see me film, I film the entire installation of. And the problem with that is it might take me an hour and a half with the filming process to put something together that might otherwise take about 10 minutes. So I wanted to really see how long this would actually take me to assemble if I wasn't filming the whole thing. And thankfully, it only took me about 15 minutes to assemble the entire thing. It comes largely assembled. And when I say that, it's broken down to fit in a very reasonable size box, one that was actually able to fit in the back of a small SUV, and it assembled very quickly. But more importantly than any of that, it came very, very well packaged. It's probably one of the most impressive packaging jobs I've seen. Maybe mainly because you see a lot of packages that focus on getting the main box as small as possible so they can reduce the freight charge, how much it costs them to ship it. In the case of this, they definitely put excessive foam where they thought it was needed. They packaged it very nice and tight, but more importantly, it seemed as if the package could take a fair amount of abuse en route to you. So big thumbs up to the folks at Inno for creating such a well-packaged product. Because the last thing you want is to get something you wait a long time for just to find out it's damaged when you get it and you have to send it back and get another one. Anyways, this is what it looks like completely assembled. Again, it only took me about 15 minutes from start to finish to assemble it. And that includes unboxing it. So oftentimes you get packages in the mail and they take a long time. They really do. And you have to pretty much expect that three hours later you might be enjoying it. Everything here was assembled by simply sliding these end pieces into place, putting four bolts on each one into place with the included out and wrench to attach it putting your cable in place, which really you don't even have to do that during the assembly process, and you're good to go. Now, a couple things about it. It's very heavy. I'm not going to lie. This thing weighs close to 50 pounds. It is very heavy. It feels very well built, but it is going to be a bit of a task to take it off your vehicle and put it into storage. But that weight is probably associated with the quality as well because it feels very, very well made. Now, before I put it into the receiver of the vehicle, I want to show you something that's really cool. So, essentially, the portion that slides into your receiver can either be one and a quarter or two inches. And in my case, I'm going to be using the two inch adapter, which already comes mounted to it. And I think for most people, especially with an SUV or a truck, you'll have a two inch receiver. If you have a really compact vehicle that you've added a receiver to, it'll probably be an inch and a quarter. But it already comes with the larger two inch receiver adapter already on it. It also comes with a stopper to prevent you from putting it too far inside of the receiver opening, which is also really nice. I really like the pin that they use. It's this little twist off assembly here that springs into place. But what's really nice is how you actually secure this once you put it in place. A big problem a lot of these bicycle racks tend to have is that they rattle around inside of your receiver. Let me flip this up so I can show you what they do to help address it. So on the front here, you have this little handle with a lock on it. You simply unlock this, this handle comes off. But before you lock it and put your cable through, this closes up and tightens. And the reason that tightens is because on the back side of it, you have this piece right here. And as you tighten it, this slides up and tightens this assembly into the receiver of your vehicle so it doesn't rattle around. Now, I am under the impression there will be a little bit of play here in the hinge mechanism that folds down to put your bikes on or to put it up when you don't have bikes on it, but I'm going to be interested to see exactly how much play there is. Okay, so an adjustment I'm going to have to make is I have to move this spacer, this stopper right here, back a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the pin whenever this hole is lined up on the side. It's not quite lined up yet, and then I'll know where to put that stopper and tighten it down. And it does include the Allen wrench you need to do that. 
Okay, so I have the bike rack slid in to the appropriate depth. I'm going to go ahead and insert the pin, turn it until it kind of locks in place and it's no longer able to rotate. Now you can see up here that this little stopper is too far back, so I'm going to loosen it with the included Allen wrench, slide this forward, and this will essentially just line it up perfectly every time. There you go. Okay, so what I told you before is it has this really cool knob at the back that inserts through here, and it actually tightens down the inside of the shank that goes inside of the receiver. So I'm just gonna put this on, and I'm gonna tighten it like this, and that locks it into the receiver. You can actually see it lifting the entire assembly up a little bit. And once it's nice and tight, you can take it off, square it up, but what's really cool is I can now take this cable that comes with it, and they make a little insert here, so you can actually take the cable, insert it in like that. There's a stopper pin here. Goes in like that. Locks in place. So whenever the bikes are on the rack, you can use this cable to secure it through the frame and then back down here. So the way they recommend doing it is actually like this. Put this through here after you have your bikes on, and you secure this over here like that and lock it in place, and this will go through the bikes. Okay, so now we have the rack secured in place and it's tightened into the shank. There is a little bit of movement here, but not that much, and it's really just the hinge mechanism here. So this is what I like about this rack and what makes it so user-friendly. First of all, it's kind of a one-handed movement to lower this. In many cases, to lower the assembly so you can load the bikes, you have to reach down real low. This one positions a very convenient handle up here. You simply lift up, you can stop it in this position, or you can bring it down and stop it in your loading position. Now it is angled towards the vehicle slightly. I'm not exactly sure the intention behind that. It's not completely flat. However, it's not that steep of an angle. It's just a very shallow angle towards the back of the vehicle. And that might be just to give you a little bit of extra ground clearance whenever you're going over terrain, which I couldn't imagine anything being so tall that it would hit. But if you have a barrier or something behind you, that might actually prevent it from hitting a barrier. Anyways, if you want to lower it even more, you simply grab the handle and you can lower it into its tilt back position. Now this position right here enables you to open up your tailgate or to open up your back hatch. So that's really nice. We're going to have to see how that works with this extra Expedition. This is my wife's 2019 Ford Expedition Platinum, and we're going to see if it clears the bikes whenever we have this rack in its tilted back position. But right now, I want to see how the thing works. We're going to open it up, we're going to put the two bikes on, and we'll see how secure they feel. Okay, so the way you open up the two arms on the end, there's a little button right here on the side. I'm going to press that button in, and you have to hold it to slide it open initially. So that arm's open. I'm going to do the same for the one in front of it. If you release it, the mechanism that you press in will want to go in and catch one of the grooves on this track going down the sides. I'm going to go ahead and open up this back one here. And then this one right here. Now we're going to load the bikes. We'll go ahead and load my Santa Cruz first. Now what I'm told is it's always important to lock your front tire down first. So we're going to go ahead and grab the clamp here, put it into place apply some pressure to the front tire. I'm gonna go over to the back, I'm gonna do the same thing. So, first bike's in. That is literally all it took. Very, very, very easy product to use. It's really well secured, actually. Now we're gonna take the second bike and load it up. Okay, now we're gonna load up the second bike. We'll get the front tire locked in place. We'll move over here to the back tire. And this rack will work all the way up to three inch wide tires. Right now the tires that are on these are between 2.2 and two and a half inches wide, but it should work out really well. Now I have it in its tilted back position, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up and that handle should automatically lock back in place. And there you have it. That is really cool and it feels really secure, I mean, it doesn't seem like it's just gonna fall off. So if you come around to the side, you can see that it's cleared off the back 
by a little bit. Plenty of room. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna tilt it back again and we're gonna see if we're able to open the tailgate. My gut's telling me we're not gonna be able to, but on a smaller, more compact SUV, you might be able to. I could definitely open the back glass because that has its own little release lever so I could get into that, but we're gonna take a look at it now. All right, so this has a power lift gate, and I'm glad I can stop it and do it manually. But you can see that with the pedal in the down position on my Santa Cruz, it clears it by about four inches, but it will not clear the handlebars. So if I let it go all the way up, it will eventually make contact with the handlebars, and I'll have a very angry wife. So you do have access to the back. If you have a power lift gate, you're going to have to put it in manual mode or you're going to have to pop it and then stop it. On this one, whenever you pop it to release, you can put your hand on it to stop it wherever you want to. And then it essentially puts it in manual mode. But it's nice that you still do have access. So if you're going to stop by the store to pick up groceries, something like that, you would have the ability to put them in. Just keep in mind, you're not going to want to do your automatic release and you're not going to want it to automatically lift up or it will make contact with some part of your bike. So we're going to go ahead and close that. Now what I want to show you is the locking mechanism. Because this is probably the most important aspect of having something like this. Your bikes are out there, they're visible, people will see them, and you're going to want to lock them up. So I'm going to show you how to put the lock on. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is lift the bikes back up into their travel position so the handle is latched back into place. And now I can get underneath there with this. It's already tightened, so all I have to do is insert this piece over the back. It'll lock the cable in place. But before I do that, I want to circle this around both bike frames. Like so. I'm going to push this through here. Actually, let me put it through, yeah, that side. Like that. Now I'm going to take this portion, I'm going to feed it under there, and I'm going to lock it into this latching handle. Okay, so now here I'm running into a little bit of a problem. The cable that they include is only about four feet long, maybe four and a half feet long. And because of the taller profile of my bike and Brian's giant bike, I don't have the slack to get down there to the lock. So I'd have to find another way to route it. I could probably go around the tire and wheel assembly, but that's not gonna be as secure. So ultimately I need to get a slightly longer cable because this one's just not cutting it. But. Okay, so cables like this are readily available at Lowe's or Home Depot. What I would definitely recommend you do as well is to cover these with some type of rubber protection because in the process of moving it around, this part right here contacted his frame and it actually scratched the finish on his bike. It didn't do it on my bike and I offered to scratch the frame on my bike for him as well, but he refused the offer. Anyways, I definitely think that this needs to be about two feet longer. That way you have the ability to wrap it around the frame really nice and well and then loop it around to the bottom to lock it in place. And also they need to put some type of a protection around this part right here, this steel, because because it can damage the frame of your bike if you're not careful. What I think I'll end up doing is probably going to a chain or going to something that's completely covered in a rubber wrap just so I don't have to worry about that potentially happening. I don't know if this has happened to other people or not, but it's definitely something you want to be aware of because just in the process of removing it, it did damage his finish a little bit and I feel real bad about that. Anyways guys, this thing is really nice and the bike rack itself I think is nearly perfect. I can't really find any flaw with how it's designed. The maximum wheelbase that you can fit on here is 48 inches so that's from the center of the hub to the center of the hub and for the most part that should fit most bikes even your really aggressive bikes but the few objections i have to this system is really all around this cable make the cable slightly longer or go to the store and buy one you can buy these cables really cheap this is definitely something you can find on amazon in almost any length you're looking for if it doesn't have any protection around this part right here i would highly recommend finding some type of a wrap maybe gorilla tape something you can can put around here to prevent this edge from making contact directly with the painted surface or the surface of your bike just to keep it from damaging it. But this is a really cool setup. Guys, I'll put a link in the description of this video if this is something you're interested in. Again, this is the 
Inno Tire 2 platform bike rack. And a platform bike rack is exactly what it sounds like. It uses these platforms for the tires to sit on. The reason why it's called the Tire 2 is because it holds two bikes and it holds it by the tires. Again, there's no part of this rack that actually makes contact to the frame, which is really nice. And that is definitely a more universal fitting setup versus the type that has a clamp that has to clamp down over the frame and compress down. So yeah, this is a really cool system. I definitely like how it's constructed. I love how they packaged it and I love the assembly process because it only took probably once you get everything unpacked about seven to ten minutes to unpack. I think unboxing it is probably the longest process simply because they packed it up so well. Aside from the cable being too short and having some sharp edges to it, it's nearly I think a perfect bike rack system. It retails for around $500 and you can find it on eTrailer.com. They are definitely my go-to source for items like this because they have a huge selection. This isn't the only brand they carry. They carry just about every other major brand of platform or trunk style or tailgate style bike rack and you have a lot to choose from plus you can read the reviews as well as ask them questions on if it'll fit your vehicle what the experience has been like and what they prefer because they have always guided me in the right direction and I think they do the same for you I definitely appreciate having them as a sponsor anyways guys I hope you enjoyed this video if you haven't had a chance please take a moment subscribe to my channel give me a thumbs up we'll talk to you again very soon